Okay, so thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jofia Adit-Tod, and uh, I'm a third year biology student at the University of Sagad, and I work at the BRC uh, in the Institute of Genetics at the Mutagenesis and Carcinogenesis Research Group, and my supervisors are Lajos Haracska and Lili Hegedűs. So different DNA damaging agents can damage our genome. These agents can come from either inside or outside our cells. To repair the damaged DNA, different DNA repair pathways have evolved. Mutations uh, in the genes coding these mechanisms can lead to heredi hereditary disorders. For example, hereditary breast cancer. I think everyone has heard about Angelina Jolie, and I think many of you has heard about her having a mastectomy, which means that she had her breast removed because she had a really high risk of developing breast cancer because she has mutations in these BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. Another example is Fanconi anemia, which can be caused by mutations in, for example, the FUNC-L or FUNC-D2 genes. Patients suffering from this disorder have bone marrow failure and development of problems like thumb development problems or, or uh, others. And another example is Xeroderma pigmentosum variant, which can be caused by mutations, mutations in the gene polymerase eta. Uh, patients suffering from this disease can be exposed to direct sunlight because they have a really high risk of developing sun-induced skin cancer. And another example is the progeroid syndromes. These are a group of disorders. Uh, I think some of you or, or many of you have uh, seen videos or, or pictures where they say that, oh, they look 70 years old, but they are only 14. Yes, because they suffer from these progeroid syndromes. Symptoms include the early onset of aging. That's me that means that they, they have accelerated aging mechanism. Also, they have growth defects and cancer predisposition. They have a really high risk of developing any kind of cancer. The causes, uh, these progeroid syndromes, are caused by mutations in the genes coding the DNA repair pathways and in the genes that code the elements of the nuclear lamina. So, for example, mutations in the Werner, Bloom, Laminae, or the Spartan gene lead to progeroid syndromes. But there are still patients that suffer from these syndromes, and they don't have mutations in any of these known progeroid genes. So that implies that there are still genes, unidentified or unknown genes, that, uh, whose mutations uh, also lead to these progeroid syndromes. So we suppose that Lily is a new progeroid gene. We think it has a role in progeria because it has a nuclear lamina-like localization. Here you can see laminase, perinuclear localization, and here you can see Lirier's similar localization. And in this western blot, you can see that uh, in the case of silencing Lilier, so in the lack of Lilier, the Werner protein, the Werner was one of these known progeroid genes. Uh, so in the case of silencing the Lilier, the, Werner of the, the level of the Werner protein was decreased. The level of this protein could be restored if we used silencing resistant Lilie plasmids, so the, plasm uh, so the cells didn't lack Lilie. Also, we observed that in the case of Lilie depletion, the cell, uh, we observed micro micronuclei, chromosome bridges, and amorph nuclei, also chromosome fusion, fusion chromosomes and, and broken chromosomes. So our aims were to identify conserved regions in the Lilie protein. As you can see, we have found a few. My task was to examine the phosphorylation regions or the regions that can be phosphorylated. So first, we searched for and found an article where they list all the proteins that are phosphorylated during the cell cycle. And in this list, we could find Lilie. So that proves to, proves to us that Lilie is phosphorylated at these regions during the cell cycle. So after this, we generated point mutants that were unable to be phosphorylated. Uh, and after we examined these point mutants using cell biological methods, we carried out localization and chromosomal elaboration assays and the cell survival assay. So as I mentioned, laminae has a perinuclear localization during the interface. Then it gets phosphorylated and it localizes to the ends of the chromosomes to help, them, uh, to help the sister chromatize proper separation during the mitosis. Uh, here you can see a microscopic image of 
the phosphorylated lamin A uh, as it localizes to the ends of the chromosomes. Lily A has a similar localization during the mitosis as well. Here you can see that Lily A, or the phosphorylated Lily A, lo locates to the ends of the chromosomes. So we suppose that Lily A has a similar dynamics to the lamin A, and the dysfunction of Lily A might be uh, regulated by phosphorylation as well. So first, we check the expression and the localization of the uh, generated point mutants. Uh, as you can see, the lack of phosphorylation of Lily A did not change the localization of the protein, but we could observe amorphous nuclei, chromosome bridges, and micronuclei as well, so that implies that the mutants cause genomic instability. To examine that, we carried out a chromosome elaboration assays. Uh, in the mutants, we could observe fusion and broken chromosomes. And then we carried out a colony forming survival assays to check the effect of the mutants on the survival of the cells in the case of DNA damage. As you can see, uh, the mutants were more sensitive to the UV induced DNA damage than the wild type cells. So, from our results, we set up a, uh, a model of the dynamics and the regulation of Lily A during the mitosis. Similarly to the lamin A, Lily A localizes, uh, has a perinuclear localization during the interface, then it gets phosphorylated, and it localizes to the ends of the chromosome, thus, separate, thus helping the separation of the sister chromatize. Here is an easier <laughs> model of that. The phosphorylated Lily A localizes to the ends of the chromosomes, thus helping, helping the sister chromatize proper separation. So, as a summary, from our localization studies, we concluded that during the mitosis, Lily A acts similarly to the proteins of the nuclear lamina, for example, lamina A. Uh, then we carried out a chromosome elaboration assays from what, uh, from what we concluded that the Lily A regulates the adequate separation of the chromosomes, and in the case of Lily A depletion, we could observe genomic instability. From our cell survival assay, we concluded that Lily A affects the survival of the cells after DNA damage. So I would like to thank for all my colleagues, all my supervisors, and thank you for your attention.